a sport that bridges generations. Live everywhere. Fight gives you instant access to live pay-per-view and free combat sports programs. Check out our combat sports schedule at fight.tv. Fight. Start watching. Well, welcome one and welcome all to V3 Fight. This is exciting. The house is packed. Well, here we go. Pretty electric, man. People are on their feet. This is your main event. Wow. Let me hear you make I'm some noise. The fight. Here we go. Nice take down. Oh, wow. Now he's in a full mount. He's laying it down. Elbows. Let's see if they touch gloves. Look wow. at that. That's a nice takedown. Trying to finish here. Right over. Ladies and gentlemen, declaring your winner. It's staying undefeated. Everyone here just got to witness V3 history. Are you looking for a good fight? Check out the fight pay-per-view schedule. Watch on the biggest screen in the house. What's the fight tonight? MMA, boxing, pro wrestling, live on pay-per-view. Just tap play and pick a screen to watch on. Playback shifts instantly to the screen of your choice. No hardware, no hassle. Download the Fight app and start watching today. Jet to Tuscan. You tired of me? Huh? I really need to get there fast. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Shut up, little boy. I'm talking to Fredo. Un poco di respect. Fredo. <laughs> Sorry, Al. There was someone disturbing me. So I was telling you about Airwolf Jet Services. They're friends of ours. The best. Amazing service. You should check them out now, www.airwolfjetservices.com. This is Chris Allen of the MMA Fight Bible and Martial Arts Chat Podcast with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. In today's news, it's been no secret that a certain teen pop superstar, well, no longer a teenager anymore, recently married 26-year-old Justin Bieber, was not too long ago in the news and actually in the MMA world news as well. 
See, he's come out and he tweeted on his Facebook. I'm sorry, he tweeted on his Twitter. I want to challenge Tom Cruise to fight in the octagon. Tom, if you don't take this fight, you're scared and you'll never live it down. Who is willing to put up the fight? At Dana White. So he tagged Dana White in this post, you know, thinking, oh, maybe Dana White wants to set, you know, a big money fight up him and Tom Cruise. Um, this did come out of the blue a little bit. A lot of people were thinking, you know, why is Justin Bieber calling out, you know, Hollywood superstar Tom Cruise? You know, this guy made his millions before Bieber was even born. You know, so why is Bieber going after such a high level, you know, actor, especially now Tom Cruise has taken quite a low profile recently? so what was the reason for this you know but anyway whatever the reason may be it never it never arose but you know not not too long after the news came out all of a sudden Bieber's back down from his own challenge that he gave to the Hollywood actor and everyone's thinking so what, what's he doing he's he's offering him out and now he doesn't want to fight him he's scared what's going on is it just a publicity stunt because has he got another song coming out you know lots of different rumors were flying around everywhere um he did get he did catch up with a couple of news news call organizations and he did say you know ma'am I was just playing it was just a random tweet I'm pretty sure Tom would probably whip my ass in a fight he said I've got to get in super shape i'm really skinny right now i think he'd probably be out my weight class he's got that you know dad strength so you know i guess we're not going to find out who really is would have won this fight and who would have put who to shame but it was interesting when you had people like dana white stating you know like yeah i'm listening you know this could be quite interesting you know i don't know if he was being serious or just going along with a joke but hey it would have been amusing but you know even conor mcgregor saw this tweet and thought to himself you know hey why not i'm starting my own mma organization up at the moment and mcgregor did respond saying if tom cruise is man enough to accept this challenge mcgregor sports and entertainment will host the bout does cruise have the sprouts to fight like he does in the movies stay tuned to find out so we're all thinking that conor mcgregor now wants to put these sort of fights on you know these fights people would watch them at the end of the day it might sound stupid it might sound silly but the amount of people that that were tuned to watch look at the McGregor Mayweather fight I know this is more on some sort of celebrity status but end of the day nothing's going to happen but you never know we might see more of this in the future from stars thinking if this is how people are getting publicity let's have a go we'll have to wait and see last weekend we um, had to say goodbye to another veteran of the sports last weekend at Bellator 222 we saw Chel Sonnen ex-veteran UFC fighter take on also former UFC fighter Lyoto the Dragon Machida unfortunately I'm sure as you all found out Machida came through successful and Chel Sonnen did lose the bout at the end of the fight Chel Sonnen you know he stated it's been a hell of a ride and like many fighters he's now left his gloves in the centre of the cage saying he's done that's it you know I've had enough I've returned tiring here and you know a lot of, I think it's right to think for Chell to do now he's had some of the best fights against some of the best caliber of fighters throughout his career and he should really focus as he's a great fighter don't get me wrong he probably could carry on but maybe focus on his presenting his analyzing and staying in the newsroom sort of scene as well as well as training fighters as well because he has got a lot of knowledge to pass on to a lot of these young up and coming fighters as well as current you know, Chell Sonnen has been in the game for a long time you know before even all the MMA scene competing for his country and all sorts of grappling competitions he joined the MMA world back in 1997 um, he, he did fight then he, he did win his first fight he didn't fight again for about five years and then after that you know he just went on a bit of a tear he joined the UFC and well if you look at some of the names in the UFC is for yeah you might see why is this guy so popular he hasn't won like any major title didn't won anything really he's lost a lot of fights but if you actually look at the fighters this guy stepped up against if you just look at his last just five or six fights even more than that you can see the level of calibers so we've got Machida obviously his previous fight against Fedor then he fought Quinton Jackson and Vandalay Silva which he did beat lost to Tito lost to Rashad beat Shogun lost to John Jones lost to Anderson Silva you know beat Michael Bisping Bryant it goes on and on and on so he has had noticeable wins against some top level oppositions but when he has come against adversity it has been against some of the best in the world Hall of Famers future Hall of Famers long term serving champions Chel Sonnen was never afraid to step up to the mark and I'm, I'm sure as we all know he made it very clear if he didn't like someone and if he definitely had something to say he wasn't someone to keep on his chest he'd let us all know he was one of the originators of the smack talk we did like to see him talking all the all the rubbish you know talking his way into the big fights and to the end of the day Joe Sonnen wasn't afraid to turn him down near defeating Anderson Silva losing in the final fifth round losing by submission so he had it and then he thought I'd step up against John Jones another one of the greatest of all times a lot of people do think this guy's crazy but you know we'll look forward to seeing what he does in the future I'm sure you'll still see him on the screens the guy's had 49 mixed martial arts fights I'm pretty sure it's 49-50 um, 130-31 of them so at the end of the day Chel Sonnen top grappler 
great for great personality in the sport and will be missed by many and we look forward to seeing what you do in the future last weekend we know we did have some incredible MMA fights but this weekend we are definitely getting sport for choice first of all it all starts off at Bellator in London returning back to London for Bellator London it's headlined by a title fight now so we've got a huge card here in the UK which I'm very very happy about um, it's not the first one they've brought over here so respect to Bellator for keep bringing these big cards over to the UK we've got to, we're going to see Gegard Musasi you know defend his belt against um, Rafael Lovato Jr., undefeated, 9-0, and submission specialist. You know, he's, he's having a tear through Bellator at the moment. But we know Gegard Musasi, he's one of the best. He's one of the best when he um, left the UFC. He left the UFC undefeated, went over to, um, say, undefeated, left on a winning streak, joined Bellator and has been on a tear ever since, winning the title. And then also we've got another big, big event after that, which is we have UFC... You know, they return back this weekend with Renato Moicano. You know, he's looking to carry on his winning ways against the Korean zombie in Chan Sung Jung. Huge, huge fight. It's going to be fireworks for sure, especially when these two are ever involved in anything. Also, another one you'll sport for choice. Yeah, we have three big events this weekend. Bare Knuckle Fighting FC. It returns back to our screens on Fight TV or pay-per-view. We're going to see Artem take on Malinaji. The grudge match. This has been going on for a long time now. Everyone's been waiting to see what happens here. It's redemption for his teammate, for McGregor. It's for that's getting slapped in the face. It's all the smack talk going on. Malinaji giving some of the MMA fans a little dig out there saying, oh, thank you for making this so hyped up. You're all stupid. So a lot of people are calling this boxing versus MMA. But, you know, Artem Lobov, you know, I've got... I've got faith in him. I'm sure he'll beat Malinaji, but again, I'll be looking forward to seeing this one. I'm on the fence with this, but big question is, well, you know, will Conor McGregor be in his teammate's corner? It, McGregor and Malinaji, as we know, have got their history as well with the sparring videos that were released during the Mayweather lead-up. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this one unfolds. So you've got three massive events to choose from this weekend. The UK event starting, obviously, earlier, and then you've got Bare Knuckle FC and UFC as well. So set those recording boxes because there's plenty of action this weekend and I can't wait to catch up with the Bellator guys this weekend where I'll be taking where I'll be in attendance and one thing I just want to mention out there for really many of the UK listeners out here um in the UK recently, I'm sure the Americans won't mind this because they've had to pay for all the events, which, don't get me wrong, I think you should, shouldn't have to pay for every single event, especially the amount they charge. I've been over to the States. I see how much they charge you. In the UK now, we used to pay, we pay a one-off fee per month and we get every UFC event that comes on, um, including the prelims as well. Um, but now they've decided to put the John Jones fight for the first time. The John Jones card will be on pay-per-view in the UK as well as on top of paying our monthly subscriptions to the channel. So you can imagine the UK market is thinking, brilliant, you know, for this we finally got it on UK TV for the last five, six, even longer years, obviously. And, um, you know, now you're going to start charging us for pay-per-view events. Is, is, this, is this a test or is this like to see if people actually order it or not? So there's a huge uproar in the UK market at the moment. Don't get me wrong, I do believe we have had it nice and easy. We have been very lucky to receive, like, you know, paying no more than £25 per month. You know, that's what, about $40 just lit under. And, um, you know, we get every single UFC event and the prelim. So UK fans are happy, but we'll see if this works out for the UFC. But me personally, hopefully it doesn't carry on and it just goes back to the way it should be. So the refs have called it. This is Chris Allen and this is your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. Coming up next, it's another knockout episode of MMA Power Hour with Colin Crandall and Adam Rodder. Until next time, we're tapping out. I'm at the tail end of a, of a brutal cold, and so I'm feeling some power, but I'm going to cling to that and hope all you guys are feeling powerful tonight. We do have a powerful and exciting show for you, so jump on in. Let's get to it, and let me bring in my co-host, co-producer, the autumn, autumn, the autumn, the awesome Dr. Adam Lionfist Roar to roar your way in here, Lionfist. There you go. You're looking properly, uh, <laughs> properly lionish uh, and wolfish, uh, my good buddy, and uh, looking great as always. How's everything going for you? Oh man, it's been a crazy, crazy week. I uh, uh, met my 
biological sister for the first time. Uh, she's uh, from over in Germany, came over here, so I've been in, uh, real busy with that and trying to catch up. And uh, as you can see, we're actually in our old studio temporarily here. Uh, that, that's because it just been so busy. I, I had to yep. do a few things over here. But uh, real quick, Colin, if, if I may, I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to Digi South uh, for helping us out with social media and pushing things along over the last little while. Really has helped out tremendously. Uh, I want to say thank you to you. Uh, but I also want to say thank you to everybody that's tuning in right now uh, preemptively because the next part is I'm going to ask you to do something for us, which I know you're going to do. It's real simple, real easy. Go ahead and give us a like, a comment, and a share. It helps us push our show along and get us to the next level, make some improvements. Uh, we've got some scheduled here over the next little while. But, I mean, uh, boys and girls, everything that we're doing, for the most part, Colin and I are, are pouring a lot of money into this, and, and we're getting time commitments from uh, – guys like Chris Allen and, and Dana Blue in every week and uh, it, it's just something where we could utilize your support uh, one way or another with likes comments and shares or uh, we have actually some t-shirts here if you're purchasing cross train uh, uh, MMA fighter shirts go to cross train MMA fighter .com. it's right there at the bottom of the screen you can see that uh, Digi South uh, helps out with social media marketing I'm I'm a big part of that both of these are actually companies of Colin and mine, and uh, any money that goes into that helps our show out tremendously. Also, our other sponsors, in order for us to, to keep going and keep uh, building up with our budget, we do need your guys' help in getting word out. Uh, that, that's a big part of, of how we can be able to do this. Uh, we don't want to have to stop. You know, there, There's a lot of stresses that Colin and I have uh, really taken on over the last little while, and uh, we just want to make sure that we can keep this going for everybody because this is such a great community. We love being a part of it and and we're so thankful that we're allowed to be a part of it and you guys are are allowing us uh to uh, bring news to you these great interviews and everything in your household every week and i uh, want to say thank you to fight tv as well so much for helping out uh we have been dealing with streaming issues so we had a, a week off last week for those of you that were looking to tune in last week or the week before uh when we actually had the issue and couldn't stream to fight tv but we got that all fixed we got that all straightened up and uh should never have that issue again uh, really appreciating everybody for everything that uh, you guys are doing the I, I mean a majority of you tuning in every week really are helping us out every week so I, I just want to say thank you and then again thank you Colin you're very welcome Adam I appreciate that uh, soliloquy and monologue and uh, it was a champion fil filibuster as the old saying goes and absolutely everything I back up 100% thank you all for all your support the more you can throw at us we really appreciate it uh, anyone that wants to like share uh, let us know any sponsors that want to reach our our larger and larger audience we're getting at least uh, five to fifteen thousand people within a week of every show looking at us on Facebook and probably close to that on fight TV so we're, we're starting to get out there and uh, anyone that uh, that knows uh, someone or if you have a product yourself possibly that you want to get word out to our hardcore audience uh, I think it would only help and uh, we'd love to uh, to invite you to come aboard and, and join us and uh, sponsor the show anyway we are about ready if you can get the get that process going yeah, yeah we got it. magic we, we have a few minutes and i actually have everything ready to go once we're ready to go but i'll, I'll call our first guest uh, right on time uh so being that we do have a couple minutes calling i i just want to really uh emphasize to everybody that we love interacting with all of you on our facebook we will not be able to do it during our show tonight when we're uh, getting set up so that we can do it every week but make sure to leave a comment or two or three or four ask ask the guests questions uh we may uh, come back and ask them the question one-on-one -on -one or something but you'll hear about it later on in the show so uh definitely ask the guest questions ask us questions we will interact 100 percent and uh, we're, we're here to make this show a fun show and uh, we can't do it without you absolutely really really appreciate uh all of our longtime friends and supporters and the new ones and uh you know we're really glad uh, that you're here and appreciate it. we plan on making this a great entertaining and informative show for you so uh, i know that uh that we are probably ready to get that great sky yeah, hey Not, we, we, we got another minute and a half got another whole minute and a half <laughs> you're, well, you're, well, you're 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 moving it right I'm along chomping. Today. i'm chomping i'm ar, 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 chomping in the bit there <laughs> well dr Adam you're moving Adam, faster than my hair grows i don't know if you I'm notice my, you. My, my my hair grows 
was that like uh, that's <laughs> it's five amazing. seconds it's like a lion's mane it's just it's incredible it is well i mean it's dr lion fist roared doc, right that's it lion fist is uh, <laughs> is the case man you got the paw and turn into a fist and uh that's where all that great power comes from man well glad to have you here so uh we're gonna have a, a fantastic show three great guests we've been doing a two guest format for a little while uh we may alternate back and forth but now we have three fantastic guests and so uh get ready for uh for some action don't miss this and uh if you do miss it or come in late when the show is over which will be at about 8 p.m pacific time in the united states you can see it then from the beginning fortunately you can't rewind it during the show and the show is airing live from 6 p.m uh to 8 p.m pacific time uh in the united states and so uh we will leave it up there as we always do and i want you to enjoy it so uh, absolutely so we are ready to go we will skype dance once we get it to go through let's rock it bum, 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 rock bum. the skype dance hey felicia can you hear me i can how are you doing very well how about yourself i'm doing good i'm gonna be a little i'm just getting in the car i had a sort of a last minute pickup i need to do but i'm all yours to talk to awesome um, <laughs> i really appreciate it well, yeah. let me give you a proper introduction ladies and gentlemen i'm so excited to have this next guest on the show those of you that watch my show know that i was strong in my call out of her to win that last big fight uh, against uh, megan anderson and i've been a fan of hers for a while we are talking about top ranked featherweight women's ufc contender felicia the phenom spencer welcome to the show felicia thank you so much for having me my pleasure i'm uh, really glad you're here how's your how's your night going so far over there in florida <laughs> oh it's going good it's a you know it's uh it's always interesting always things that come up and um I just actually got done training and then uh, got a call that, you know, there's been some, some car issues, so I'm just going to pick up my fiance uh, a little ways away. So. Gotcha. Well, sorry to hear about the car uh, issues, but I'm glad things are getting on track and glad you got a good training session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, uh, yeah, great full day of training. Um, and then I'm looking forward to eating some food and going to bed. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you giving us some time in between and uh, and want to talk about your upcoming fight. Uh, probably 99.9% .9 of people know, for, but for that 0.1% or people who have been busy or living under a rock, uh, please let us know uh, when your next fight is and who you'll be fighting and where that's going to take place. Yeah, I'll be fighting Chris Cyborg uh, for the coming event of UFC 240. That's in Edmonton on July 27th, um, so about six weeks from now. Awesome. So you must be excited that's an amazing fight and uh i'm so excited to see that fight as well you are originally a canadian spent most of your time in florida but is edmonton anywhere near where you were born or ever spent any time no i've, I've never personally been to edmonton i know my parents have uh, my, i was born near montreal okay. so that's in quebec uh, completely other side it's <laughs> uh you know, it'd be like going from Florida to, you know, Vegas or California. It's pretty right. far away. So, Understood. Uh, I'm excited, though. It's like a new, you know, a new experience. Uh, I got Addie back here. I don't know if you see her head popping up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. Cool. Uh, she, she's got to be a big supporter of yours, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, she's. She's uh, she's awesome. She, uh, she like yesterday she went to build a bear. I don't think she has it with her now, but she na she made a bear and named it Phenom. So I love it. Super sweet. Um, Very cool. You know, Very she loves cool. to train too. She's a uh, she's got a couple stripes on her white belt in jujitsu, so she's she's working hard too. Awesome. Big respect for that. I do that myself and uh, jujitsu all the way. One of the best sports out there. Great self-defense. And one of the things that I think uh, uh, I don't hear people say enough probably is I think it's one of the best uh, self-defense methods that women can learn. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. Um, and that's part of the reason why my uh, why my parents, I think, put put us in martial arts to begin with. And at first it was Taekwondo, but 
um, I think, you know, it evolved into to jiu-jitsu. They saw that martial arts, there was some martial art that was really effective or, you know, really uh, practical. Um, you know, in our in, when I started, there wasn't any jiu-jitsu where they were at, so they started off, you know, with Taekwondo, and then it, like, so it kind of just evolved. And my mom even, uh, when I was a teenager, my mom did Brazilian jiu-jitsu with me. Um, we kind of started it together as white belt mm-hmm. uh, with my brother, and uh, it was really cool to, to kind of start off, you know, my mom, you know, uh, having her way with me on the mat and key locking me all the time and then you know a few years later the tables kind of turned and we had fun for a while nice that must have been a blast Uh, yeah Yeah, it's a really cool uh, thing to reminisce about (laughs) that's cool but now she never would wake you up in the middle of the night saying here's an armbar defend quick like you know who i'm talking about right Um, i've heard this story um Gosh, I, I have heard this before. I can't recall who it's about, but Ronda no, Rousey. Not. Yep, Ronda Rousey. That's right. Yeah, yep. her mom. She was she was on a whole other level. <laughs> right. Yeah, her mom was uh, was yeah. a world champion judoka, and I think Ronda right. would say that she would wake her up and quickly like give her a second to realize she better defend uh, the armbar, <laughs> right? You know, and Ronda was I like, think, "Wow." Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, maybe my. My mom might have been more like, you need to clean your room right now. Nice. When I wake up. <laughs> I love it. That's um, cool. Yeah. But uh, did you take, excuse me. <laughs> oh, wow. There's a little bit of the cold showing for everyone there. Uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all understanding. Did you take to the, uh, the martial arts right away? Were you automatically excited and anxious to go to every class? Or was it the opposite or somewhere in between? Um, you know, I was four when I started Taekwondo, and oh, wow. um, I only have good memories of wanting to be the, be at the gym all the time and training. Um, and my 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 parents tell you know tell me about things I don't even remember. To, you know about when I first started, like just how much it, it clicked, and like how I would just you know if we would be sparring, you know how five year olds would spar. Like I would just be you know stalking people down and just loving it. It's a big smile on my face. Um, so a lot like how I fight, I guess. <laughs> um, just a big smile and just having fun. So yeah, it's, definitely been, it's always been a positive thing for me, a place where I can open up. And, and I've said in a lot of interviews before that I was extremely shy and reserved and like just not, uh, not one for for speaking or anything to people I didn't know, you know. So martial arts was like the only time where I was like really just able to, exp- I guess, express myself or just have friends that I was comfortable with, like having that relationship, um, training together. Just you know, you only really know about it if you've done it. Um, it's kind of hard to describe otherwise like, yep. the friendships that you have. So I'm sure you know all about that. Absolutely, so. very, very much so. And even though I'm nowhere near the the level, not being a professional fighter and a high level one at that, like you are, absolutely the hard training and the battles I go through with my brothers and sisters in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and when I trained in stand up karate and in Muay Thai, um, wrestling, judo with the, the Jiu Jitsu, it's it's serious bonds. It really, really is. And I can just imagine you guys that are out there putting absolutely everything into it as your livelihood is going to be even more so so yeah i'm with you 100 percent there and you always do seem to have that positive vibe about you and it's cool to see that that's always how you, you're welcome and it's, it's cool to see that that was kind of you know innate and in how you were as a kid and so that's it's kind of like a really good martial arts attitude and uh and you're also a teacher that's something that really impressed me my mom was a teacher for 30 years and oh. always had huge respect for teachers and with you being a math teacher as some of you people out there know the other famous UFC fighter who was a math teacher is a UFC Hall of Famer and two-time UFC champion Rich Ace Franklin and uh, I remember watching throughout his whole career that I think they say he did continue working for several years and so it's kind of you know in a way cool that I think the only other at least one that we know about prominent teacher and math teacher is someone who became a champion so i'm sure maybe there's a at least a little kernel of uh encouragement that that gives you i bet yeah for sure you know i always uh when i first honestly when when franklin was toward the probably more so toward the end of his career was when i started to watch 
UFC and right. get into it, even though I had been training for so long. Um, so I really, I didn't even know he was a teacher until after he was already with my favorite uh, fighter. I just liked his demeanor and his fighting style and, uh, you know, I just, I kind of picked him and just something about him I liked. Um, and then I was like, oh, wow, he's a math teacher. Um, and at that time, I think I was still going to school and I, I was still undecided and just kind of coincidence that I ended up becoming a math teacher too. And um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still working. Uh, and honestly, summers are the absolute busiest time for my position. I'm a virtual school teacher, so it's the absolute busiest time. So it's really, really crazy every day. Um, training and juggling everything but uh i you know it's it's crazy it's just, i'm always up for the challenge and um i, I I've, over the years i've really just tried to tackle everything and try to be as stress-free and just like you know this is this is what i'm doing and i'm gonna find a way to make it happen and just put a smile on doing it so absolutely uh, it's been working out <laughs> absolutely it definitely seems like it is and it seems like you are definitely an energizer bunny when it comes to getting things done and a lot of respect for that because it's a lot of work you know and so i uh, definitely think that uh, that you're doing the right thing and i'm sure you know that can i ask you do you find that being a teacher whether it's whether it's math per se or just teaching has helped you in your career because with rich franklin it really seemed like he he was really a, a fighter with a high fighting iq like he was able to borrow some of the skills he had in teaching and apply it to strategy do you find that it's helped you a, a, in any way absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know i i can say i also have been teaching martial arts you know for a long time since I was a kid, I was teaching, you know, helping teach. And that part, you teaching someone new something about a technique really makes you understand techniques better. Yeah. And aside from that, just, just teaching in general, um, I'm very patient. And, and I'm not sure if it's something that I grew to become or if that's just from, you know, if that's just how I've always been. But the patience and understanding that you get from teaching and, and helping someone grow, um, you, you're not mad at a student for not getting something right the first time. And I think I'm not hard on myself. Um, I'm hard on myself in a healthy way, but I'm not, I don't put myself down when I mess up. Um, and I think that's because I understand what, what it takes to learn something and mistakes happen along the way. So when I don't do something to perfection, I'm not just beating myself up about it. You know, I feel like the teacher in me is like, hey, this is what I need to fix. It's okay that I did something, you know, not, not perfect. And like that kind of patience that I have with students, I've started to like p apply that to myself. And it just makes, you know, it just makes training. I'm Training is always fun. And, you know, I laugh at myself when I mess up and it's, it's okay. And it's not always uh, an aggressive grind, you know? So I feel like that's something I've just kind of thought about recently and how that applies. And I think it's really valuable that a lot of people maybe don't have, haven't thought about in that way. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. But, it does. Uh, it does. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. I get that a hundred percent. The old saying you learn when you teach is really true, huh? Yeah, yeah, and Absolutely. being patient with, with others and learning how to be patient with yourself is, is really, a, really important, so. Absolutely. And so tell us about uh, where you train and uh, who's, who's coaching there and who's some of the people that help you out uh, in, uh, in your endeavors uh, to continue success in the UFC. I'd love to hear about some of your, uh, your great team members and uh, where that is and, uh, and uh, who's, uh, who's coaching. Yeah, uh, well, when I when I moved to Orlando in 2009, um, I had already known uh, Mike Lee is my head coach. Um, I knew him from the time I was about 12. Mm -hmm. He had he was teaching adults at the Taekwondo school I was I was at, and I was doing jujitsu at that school too when I was around that age. But I didn't interact with him as much at that time. But he was around and knew me. And uh, when I moved to Orlando. Um, he reached out and invited me. He had just opened up the jungle. That's the gym I train at in Orlando. Um, it was it was only open for about six months when he invited me, and I started going there. Um, Seth Petrozelli is also one of the owners and also one of my coaches. He'll be in my corner. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, you know, just the 
the relationship that I've been able to build with both of them now over the past, you know, uh, 10 years is, um, it's, you know, it, it's like a family relationship. Like they know me, I know them, we have fun. Uh, there's there's a lot of respect that we have, um, but at the same time, again, it's like we can, you know, make fun of each other and, uh, you know, uh, go about it like that. And the training partners I have are amazing. It's, you know, there's, over the years, there's been so, so many, and I take something from all of them. You know, I really value how, how many different people I've trained with. Uh, currently, I have some professionals even at the gym that are, you know, sort of, I guess not as big name, you know, not in UFC yet, uh, but soon to be, you know, we have a new uh, in, newly signed Invicta athlete, uh, Megan Colley. We have Luke uh, Pacuse, I can never say his name. Um, they help me a lot. Uh, Luke's a professional. Uh, and, you know, we have a number that I'm <laughs> going to fail to name, but uh, they're always a big part of every camp and, um, you know, helping me get ready for uh, for everything and, also some of my best friends so very cool is there a name for that team or, or not really um <laughs> not for a long time we, we're just the jungle you know the jungle of the day that's uh, right you did say jungle back in right. the day, mm -hmm. yeah back in the day we were uh oh god i think it was um i forget actually you know what i forget what what we called ourselves uh way you know eight or nine years ago there was a name that we had a Oh, the Iron Monkey Squad. Nice. Uh, we haven't called ourselves that for a long time. The Iron Monkey Squad. <laughs> I like that. And now Jungle <laughs> Jungle <laughs> MMA out, out of Orlando, Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Now, most gyms have more men than women. I imagine that's the case where you are. And does it matter to you? What's your feeling about training with men as opposed to training with women? Um, we, like, like you said, at any gym, generally, that's the, the population. Yeah. Um, I think I've... I think it's great to train with both. Um, of course, up and coming, it was almost entirely men only that I would train with. And, you know, I think there's a benefit to that in a certain way. But at the same time, over probably the last five years, maybe six years at the jungle, the women that have come through and stuck with it have been, the, the numbers have just, it's almost even in certain classes. You know, like sometimes there'll be six or seven women and, the same number of men. Um, we have a really solid female uh, group at the jungle, and you know, kind of. I can't say it started with me, but like, you know, there were uh, a few that kind of stuck around. Like, hey, you know, this is, you know, they met me and realized that I, you know, that uh, you can do martial arts and fight even, and and not be uh, the how it's normally portrayed, I guess. Um, and they just value, you know, this found it different and uh, a lot of there's been so many women now that come through and help me train all the time uh, but I definitely think it's good to train with with everybody you know I train with people who are bigger than me people who are smaller than me uh, if I, uh, I really value training with, with people who are smaller or even like less less skilled because it's like I tell my students you know if you try to do something that you're learning you know you're trying to get better at something if you can't apply that move to someone that's smaller or not as skilled as you, then you're never going to apply it to someone that's on your level. So I think having training partners that are either smaller or not on the same skill level is almost more valuable than having people that are on your level. Like just to have that kind of uh, sort of like live drilling practice yeah. with people. Um, but yeah, you know, there was a long time of just, me being the only girl, but uh, things have definitely changed a lot, especially in Orlando. Good, good. It sounds like a great atmosphere. Well, there's definitely yeah. more I want to ask you about your upcoming fight with Cyborg, and we'll come back to that. But right now, you were kind enough to agree to jump into our pros pick segment. I want to get your opinion on three big women's UFC fights, and so we're going to jump into the pros pick segment uh, with Felicia Spencer, brought to you by Digi South, and let's jump into this first fight, and we'll save maybe the most uh, high-profile one for last. So, first okay. off, all right, what do you think about the former flyweight champion Nico Montano, who uh, won the Ultimate Fighter a couple years ago, uh, going up in weight 10 pounds to face Sarah McMahon. I'd love to hear like a minute breakdown on what he thinks going to be important in that matchup and what we may see unfold, and then a prediction if you have one. Um, yeah, this one is interesting, and 
you know, a lot of the time people talk about weight and, you know, it's only 10 pounds between the divisions, but at the same time, I think Nico is a bigger fly weight. Um, so I don't think that's going to be a, a huge factor in the, in the fight. Um, obviously, Sarah McMahon is, is, she's known, she's, she's one of the highest level wrestlers that are in the sport, you know, on the, especially on the women's side. So, I can see it going to McMahon. It's hard. I, I'm always very on the fence about picking. I, yeah. I am a fan of so many people and pretty much like everybody. But um, I can see it going McMahon's way, probably by um, you know, probably by a decision. Yeah. Um, I think you know Nico would would have a better. Uh, I'm not I'm not too familiar with her takedown defense right. or her ground, but I, I think you know if she keeps it standing, she'll have a better. You know, a better chance of putting it away. Yeah, I think you're right, and and that's a that's a good enough insight. You being on the fence is okay, even though you're leaning toward uh, McMahon. I, I I feel the same way. I think that unless Sarah McMahon is put on her back, she's going to be in that fight and possibly in it to win it. However, if she somehow is put on her back, that seems to be her kryptonite after a lot of years, and maybe there's wear and tear on her body, or just as a wrestler, it's so unnatural to be on your back and not only that but the the women that beat beat her have been very very high level i don't know if montano's there yet but that's going to be really interesting if sarah can stay off her back i think she wins that fight but she's fighting a younger fresher fighter so it's going to be an interesting True. you know right interesting yeah nico's test. hungry i'm sure nico wants to make a statement so yeah. that's a dangerous fight to be in for anybody yeah <laughs> yep i agree it should be exciting let's jump to the next one germaine durandamy the first ever UFC featherweight champion uh, who relinquished her title so as not to fight the woman that you readily agreed to fight. So big props to you. No disrespect to Jermaine Durandamy, although there's a lot of haters out there for her, of course. But anyway, she's a great striker from Holland, and she's going up against Aspen Ladd. Real contrast in styles there. What do you think about that matchup uh, at bantamweight, one weight below your class? Um, that one, I, I think it's a great, uh, a great matchup for Aspen. Uh, I, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of a big fan of Aspen, uh, you know, just following her career. Um, I, I like her style. I like, you know, just kind of something about her I, I do like. And like you said, no, nothing against Jermaine, uh, kind of respect for her skills. But I think Aspen is one of these young, you know, martial artists who are so well-rounded that she'll be able to take the fight where she needs to, which is probably, you know, wrestling or on the ground where yep. she'll probably have more success. I can see her putting, I can see Aspen finishing the fight within, you know, within the time, probably not first round, but, you know, with second or third round finish, I can see it. Yeah. I think you're probably right. I really do. I mean, Durandamy's corner have got to be drilling her on takedown defense and on also throwing some really good punches up the middle, maybe uppercuts and knees. They've got to pretty much know that if she can't stop the takedown, then at least she better hurt Aspen Ladd quick. And if she can't hurt her quick, then it's just probably all going to be a, 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 a hard night of being put on your back and, and possibly smashed by the girl that loves screaming at her opponent as she's pounding them uh, from the top, which is an interesting uh, Aspen Lad uh, trademark. But, you know, hey, she's passionate, I guess you could say, but a really good fighter. I, you know, I think you're right as well with Aspen Lad on that. Main, main event in this final uh, segment of our pros pick. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Holly Holm challenging Amanda Nunez for the UFC Women's Bantamweight Championship. Love to hear how you see that one playing out and maybe anything, any interesting insight you can throw on that from being a high-level fighter that maybe some fans or, or so-called kind of experts think that they may know or have not heard of. Love to hear, love to hear your thoughts. Okay. Yes, this one's super interesting, and I think it has a lot to, you know, the outcome of this fight, I think it, it, it'll play a lot, obviously, to the Bantamweight division, but it'll also determine a lot about the Featherweight division, yes. I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, man, they're both so, so talented. It's, I, I, I kind of am leaning towards Holly Holm being able to figure out a way to, um, 
you know, just have a perfect game plan, just like she always seems to. Um, I feel like Nunez is very aggressive and she could put anybody away. But Holly is, kind of, like I said, her camp is known for game planning really, really well. And um, I think that she'll have the uh, presence of mind not to brawl or to get stuck in a game plan that she wasn't, you know, planning for. So, uh, so even though it's obviously, like I said, I'm always on the fence and I'm a huge fan of both, and especially with Nunez being champion in my division, yes. um, I do kind of, I kind of see Holly possibly you know, winning in that one, probably by decision. I don't see her finishing Nunez, but, um, so that would be my pick if I had to. Like I said, you kind of, you know, I don't like to, but if I have to, I would yeah. pick home. I appreciate it. And you know, myself and our entire staff have got home in that one as well. I think, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think Holly is going to do it. I think she's got to be smart. She's got to be on point the entire time. But I think just her striking skill, her, her elusiveness, her defensive skill, her great kicks may be the answer. Here's a question I have for you. And it, it may have already been printed, but remember, I've been battling a cold for like eight days, so I'm missing a lot of the update in, in news that I normally don't miss. What's going on? With that, are they basically saying that pending what happens in that fight, then your fight with Cyborg may or may not be for the vacant title? Are they letting Amanda hold on to that featherweight title pending the result of her fight with Holly? What are the ramifications of that? And 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 with the cyborg fight with you i imagine right now that's not for an interim title or is it or what have you heard um absolutely nothing um right. <laughs> but i you know kind of the thought the thought that that you had there has has popped into our mind about with the nunez fight being before mine yeah if she vacated the featherweight belt then it is possible, you know, that, that, that they might change my fight to be uh, something different, you know, or, uh, you know, honestly, I have no idea. Uh, everything is just speculation, but yeah. uh, they haven't talked to me about anything uh, regarding the, the title or anything like that. So as far as it goes, you know, it's just a regular three-round fight with right. no uh, stakes, but of course, you know, it, we're number number one and number two on the rankings and yeah. um, anything can happen. I really think a lot is going to depend on what Nunez does after this fight. Yeah, yeah, and the result uh, of yeah, that. It could, it could become exciting very quickly. Who yeah, knows? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, and it already is. And, uh, my, you know, yeah. my thought is if Nunez beats Holly, she sticks with her word and basically says, why do I need those bigger girls for? I don't need them at all. And she stays where she is. If she loses to Holly then it comes down to whether she wants Holly back or you or Cyborg. And so, you know what I wonder? I wonder how long they're going to let her mull things over. Normally, they're not letting the, the double champs mull things over for so long. They're pretty much saying, listen, we have to know. But it seems to me like they're going to... Um, what yeah, do you I mean... Yeah, they're kind of going to let her mull it over almost, and it almost seems like, what do you think? I mean, I, you know, obviously, probably shortly after her fight, they're going to ask her what her intentions are, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I think it really does, a lot of it's going to be whether she wins or loses to Holly. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, the, the ball is kind of in her court, I think, um, I think the UFC might just not be really even pressing pressing her for a decision because they might not have any idea what they want. Right, right. Um, and also, we have to keep in mind that this is the last fight on Cyborg's contract. So right. So who knows what can happen with the negotiations that they'll have with her or what, you know, so many different things could be happening after this that I don't even think about it anymore. No. I'm going to go in there and it, right. make everyone... Just make everyone's plans shuffle around when I beat her, and then uh, we'll see what happens then, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because th that could be part of it as well. Not only does she have to see what happens after her fight, but even then, if they asked her, she might say, well, let me see who wins, Felicia or Cyborg, and then I'll tell you. 
you know, right? So right, right, that you know yeah. that would be interesting. But I'm sure either way you're going to be ready. Well, I know we only have two, uh, about two or three more minutes left with you. Let me know uh, a couple things about Cyborg. Has she been on your radar for several years? Did you did you always figure there was going to be a showdown with her? And and how do you feel about what? Cyborg's thoughts are going to be going into this fight having lost kind of in a quick fashion against Amanda Nunez several months ago. Uh, yeah, well, first off, yes, I've been uh, looking forward to facing Cyborg and just hoping that she doesn't leave the sport before I had a chance to for a long time. Um, probably like if I had to put a time frame on it, around the time when she started to fight for Invicta, nice. um, I was I followed Invicta from the number one show, you know, so it's, um, she's been someone that I've wanted to fight and, uh, you know, solve her puzzle first, and then Nunez did it first, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm... What was the second part so of that? So, second uh, part is, what do you think, you, what, what kind of cyborg do you think you'll be seeing in light oh, of the yeah. fact that she got smoked by, by Amanda? The same old <laughs> cyborg, or do you think it'll be back to her uh, being patient, or what do you think? Yeah, I think she'll be, I'll, I think she wanted to be her, her new patient uh, version of herself when she fought Nunez and, and maybe just got a little caught up. So, I don't ever read into too much about someone that gets finished really quickly um, or just fights that happen so quickly sometimes it's, I don't I don't even want to consider too much about it because anything happens and it's always kind of weird and crazy yeah uh, so I'm expecting just the most calculated version of Chris Cyborg that exists and um, and I'll be standing in front of her with the best version of myself and the uh, you know we'll have at it it's be fun absolutely <laughs> so definitely expecting a, a patient and uh, you know, uh, probably not brawling so much uh, type of cyborg. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope, you know, I, I think there's going to be some interesting uh, groundwork done. I think those of us that have always been curious to see uh, Cyborg use some of her jits in MMA are going to have a chance to at least see her try. Although I think she's really more of a top you know, player um, got better top game in her jits, but then I'm sure her 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 guard and her bottom game is okay. But I think that's going to be really interesting. So I think you will take her down, and I think that that it's going to be interesting seeing jits. The only difference is that if you put her on her back and you're also able to strike and your ground and pound is really good, you know, that's going to make it even harder for her, regardless of how good her jits is. But you know, obviously she's got some game, and you know, I just don't know whether it's the bottom game, and so it's going to be interesting. I'm sure you're you're in it for however it goes and uh and you know you're confident in your skills and uh you know i'm really excited for that fight and uh I, you know i think this is going to be awesome 145 i think is your home forever there are some people are saying that well it seems like felicia could cut and dehydrate this that blah 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 but i remember you said you once fought heavier and i think 45 is indeed the place that you're going to be i know people have asked but may i ask is there any thought down the line if you win of trying to be a champ champ somewhere else or or you think 45 is about as low as you'll go um i really just my focus is being the, the face of the featherweight division um you know anything can happen in the future but that is not anywhere on my radar um it's not part of my plan or anything you know i plan to dominate the, the division and kind of help you know build it a lot of the people who, who have been uh, in the division or just you know we're just trying to build it it's almost like we don't want to have to step on each other to build it, but we kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I have no intention of anytime soon dropping, uh, you know, who knows what the, what the future will hold, how my body will feel then, but, um, I'm very happy and healthy where I'm at. And, you know, I still cut weight to get to featherweight and, yeah. um, you know, it's, um, uh, I think the opportunity that I have here is a big one. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, like, just to answer your question, I'm, I'm yeah. sticking around for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, and here's a thought that I bet you had. I have a feeling that after you beat Cyborg, you'll find all of a sudden that some 135 girls are willing to go up. Not that not that they should against you, but I have a feeling that some of the women that were looking at Cyborg, especially before the Nunez fight, saying, no way, there's no way I want any part of that. I have a feeling 
all of a sudden there's going to be a few people willing to go up because you're such a upbeat smiley faced math teacher <laughs> right and they're like oh, okay i'll get yeah. in there with her i so i think it's going to be good i have a feeling all of a sudden there's going to be some <laughs> more fights materialized for you don't you i agree and you know i i can't even uh and I think I think it wouldn't even be like a wrong move. There's a, probably a lot of or a few women at bantamweight that are maybe unhealthy getting there. You know, even just you know dieting throughout. Um, there's been a, a trend, especially on the men's side, moving up to a weight class that they feel healthier at and happier. You know, living their life in. So, uh, you know, with it seems like it hasn't been like a trend that's looked at in an positive way yet for the women like um you know there's, there's plenty of men that have moved up and it's not really uh frowned upon so yeah i think there'll be uh there'll be uh new opponents that pop up for sure especially with i know my name isn't as big so why you know why wouldn't they jump on the opportunity to to try to derail you know hype train or something like that you know so yeah. for sure i totally Totally agree. Absolutely, and we support your statement. Fighting at a healthy weight where you actually have more of your fluid in your brain, water in your brain there so you can absorb the punches, so you can be healthy and not dehydrated. Our show is 100% for that, and I have seen men doing that. I hope that women do as well, and I think that uh, that you'll get some great competition, and you're awesome at 145. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on the MMA Power Hour. Felicia, we were big fans before you came on, even bigger fans now. We're going to be cheering for you like crazy against Chris Cyborg, at the UFC in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada on July 27th. And uh, you guys are the main event on that card, am I right? Um, Co-main. Uh, Holloway. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank now. Holloway, Holloway and Edgar. Event. And Holloway and Edgar, okay. I yeah, yeah. Oh, how did I forget that? Still, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Still, that's awesome. Great card. Yeah, Great card. yeah. It, it really is. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, let everyone know, I know you're super busy, but if people want to shout out support for you, what's the best social media place that, that uh, people can shout out support? And if you do ever have time to respond that you would, not that that may be every day, but what's the best play people people can yeah. get out of love for you? Uh, well, I'm on, you know, I'm on all of them, you know, Instagram and, and not so much on Twitter. I try to respond to everyone on Instagram. Um, it might get overwhelming, but nice. I'm on, you can follow me at Phenom479. Um, I'm on Facebook, too. You have an athlete page you can follow. Um, and, yeah, I do really, you know, I really try to interact with you guys, and I really appreciate all the support that, um, all the kind messages that, you know, people send me and the support from, you know, media, we wouldn't be able to do this without being promoted like you guys, you know, uh, you know, media like, like this helps promote fights. And I'm, I'm very grateful to have your time doing this too. Well, uh, you're very and of welcome. Course, thank you to all my sponsors and everyone that supports me at the gym and in everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again. Uh, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Love to talk to you again somewhere down the line. Stay in touch. Yeah. Keep up all the great work, and uh, we'll be cheering for you like crazy on July 27th. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much again, uh, and thank you for your patience with this uh, camera angle. <laughs> Not a problem at all. Bye. You take care. Bye. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. Bye-bye. And that was Felicia Spencer. Looks like and her daughter there, I imagine, was it? Dr. Adam Ward? I hadn't yeah. heard the first thing she said, but yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. I we didn't have hear. my mic on. We yeah, yeah. So <laughs> she was in there jumping in too when uh, I, I was switching the scene over. I guess I did it a little preemptively, but. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. Was, yeah, that was pretty cool that she was uh, there with her. and uh, Yeah, and her daughter was well behaved and quiet. Well behaved. Yeah, yeah. One of the most well behaved kids that's happened to ever. pop on this. Well, yeah, ever. Uh, yeah. But yeah. to pop up in the background on the show, yeah, we've absolutely. had a few she that were. the end and said goodbye bye <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. No, what a really nice person. She just seems totally like like the the girl next door that's super cool that's reliable that has a great attitude she's not only teaching math but she's teaching excuse me um martial arts uh you know mma at her school jungle mma in orlando orlando florida and a uh, really good attitude and yeah just an upbeat person that big smile it just seems like a really genuinely nice person that works really really hard and uh yeah i, I like her chances against cyborg everyone always said for years too 
Let's get someone that can grapple. Let's get someone that can wrestle. Let's get someone with ground game against Cyborg. It turned out it was someone with the punches that caught her and Amanda Nunez, but this is a matchup that people have been really interested in, this stylistic matchup for many years, and uh, I think that Felicia has a really good chance. I've always been a fan and appreciated Cyborg, always felt Cyborg should get that rematch with, with Nunez, but she's fighting Felicia now. I think Felicia can do it. She's just going to take her down, and I think she's going to she's gonna possibly end uh, Cyborg's career, not in any bad way of damaging her badly. We have never hope anyone's damaged, but I think that second loss may be it uh, for Cyborg, who's had a great career. But I think Felicia Spencer uh, in the upset uh, slight uh, and uh, July 27th will be the winner of that fight and possibly guaranteed a fight uh, with Nunez or maybe by the time that fight happens after the home Nunez that may be for the interim title belt which would be freaking awesome wouldn't it absolutely absolutely and I think she's live in this one for sure as well I yeah. think uh, now that we all know that Cyborg is beatable uh, and, and really who she's beatable going up against this yeah. is a, a grappler you yeah. know, coming in that really strong that, grappler yeah can take it that way so this is yeah. this is interesting seeing what what's going to come of it i'm definitely behind felicia on this one yep. in fact i am uh uh, pretty confident in this one. I'm going to go ahead and put a few bucks down on this fight. Yep. I, I'm not yep. condoning uh, gambling right. not or anything. Gambling but... or anything like that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put a few bucks on, on the underdog, Felicia Spencer, and uh, you got a good chance. Anyway, we are ready whenever you can for our very next guest. All right. And I'm actually and, uh, all prepared. So cool. We can let's do that do Skype this dance. And let's Skype rock. dance. Let's rock and roll. Hey, Chris, can you hear me? Hello. Hey, Chris, can you? Yep, we got you. Perfect. Actually, let me give you a proper introduction, ladies and gentlemen. So happy to have this next guest back on our show. This is a legend of UFC fighting, also undefeated in Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship action as well as a commentator for the organization uh, numerous time five six time ufc fight of the night bonus winner talking about mr chris lights out Lytle. welcome back to the show chris what's happening man thanks for having me on again Hello. my pleasure man always great to have you on and i really appreciate your time you are over there in the beautiful midwest in the state of indiana it's a pre-summer there end of spring how's everything not too hot yet is it no, ha having a ton of rain, it's crazy. But um, mm. you know, I'm actually heading out tomorrow morning. I got a my flight leaves at six a.m. I'm heading down to Florida to do the bare knuckle boxing match. I'm excited. BKFC uh, six, so really nice. excited for that one. Fantastic, and you're going to be commentary. You'll be on the mic for that, right? Correct. Awesome, fantastic, and that is going to be your second uh, your second occasion to be doing the television commentary for it. So, how was the first time? I know, obviously, over the years, you've had a chance to be on the mic, but did you feel did you feel nervous at all that last time when you were officially there on the mic for BKFC, or did it come uh, smooth as silk? Um, you know, it, it's a constant, you know trying to get better at everything. You know, the thing I've realized, and, and, and some people could do that supernatural, and, you know, other times, no matter how natural it is, it's to get out there and talk. It's just a little bit different. So the more you, just like anything, though, the, and I'm a firm believer, just rep. So the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, I've been trying to do a lot of local shows around here, Midwest, just trying to get uh, more acclimated to it, just so you feel comfortable out there. Uh, and, you know, just kind of knowing what your role is. It's not just going out there and saying whatever you want. You know, you have the, the color, you have the person supposed to do in, you know, different different roles. You got play-by-play, -play, Kelly. So, you know, I'm supposed to kind of describe um, what's going on from a fight standpoint. So yep. it's just a little, uh, you know, it's what I, you know, you want to let the other guy give the, you know, the details of what exactly is going on. You want to try and put in interesting stuff that people want to know who don't understand the fight world as well. Yeah, absolutely. The main event on that card, I guess this, this Saturday, right, is uh, Paulie Malinaji against Artem Lobov, right? Correct, correct. Man. You know, the thing, I'm, the thing I'm noticing about the whole overall theme with all the fights there, it seems like there's some really good fights. Yeah. But it seems to me you have, like, boxer versus, you know, a brawler. You yeah. Know, you have a, yeah. a slick yeah. guy who, who wants to get in there and hit punches and, and move, and a, another guy who's willing to take punches and just wants to maul a guy. So you have a lot of different matchups like there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it's interesting to see. I don't believe – you're going to get like all the brawler or all the boxers going to win. I think you're going to have a split. So I don't think you can say, well, this kind of fight is going to beat the other one. I think it depends on the individual. So it should be great. Yeah, absolutely. And as a, a man on the mic, uh, 
doing the commentary for BKFC, there's no way it would be appropriate to get your opinion or break down anything <laughs> on that. You're not getting that from me, no, no. Me. So that's that. That will we won't we won't even bother to ask. But it should be really <laughs> exciting. My hope as an MMA guy is that even if Artem can't win, at least hopefully he does hopefully something, he does. man. Because <laughs> this trash talk by uh, Malinaji, man, is getting just almost to the level of insanity. Uh, so my hope is that either Artem knocks him out or at least holds his own. And uh, so, you know, we can finally see Malinaji shut the F up, you know, a little bit there. All respect to Malinaji. But anyway, let me ask your opinion on some fights that you can talk about here. Okay. And, and all right, I appreciate yeah. it. I know we got about 15 minutes. And, uh, and so got several fights here. Let's jump into this coming up weekend, the 22nd from South Carolina. And uh, let's start out with uh, the women's fight. Andrea KGB Lee against uh, Montana De La Rosa. Interesting, interesting fight uh, on that uh, on right there. Uh, Montana De La Rosa, I think a little bit of the taller girl and the younger girl. Um, I, I, we've had Andrea on the show several times before. I don't know. I think Montana is the better grappler, may have her number here. But more important to me is your opinion, if you can give me maybe 45 seconds or, or something on that matchup, uh, on how it breaks down and the result or uh, prediction if you have one. Well, like you said there, um... Very compelling fight. That's a tough. It's a very good matchup, and I think the matchmakers did a good job. They're they're very even, like you said. Um, slight height advantage. Nothing too much out of ordinary. Um, if it were me picking, I, I, I for some reason I'm thinking uh, I was gonna go with with KGB. I think there's just something about it gives her a slight edge. I wouldn't put much. Uh, on to either direction right there because I think it's a very even fight. I think he's going to have a very good fight there. I don't think it's going to be too lot, but I would go with KGB and that'd be my final pick. Gotcha. Understood. All right. How about um, the next fight on that card? Uh, John Lineker coming in as a late, late replacement for our, our good friend from my home state of Michigan, Cody Stamen. But uh, Lineker's coming in late replacing him uh, to go against Rob Font. Uh, give me about 45 second breakdown on that one and a prediction if you have it. And there is when we do have a pretty good size difference. You know, Lineker is going to be a little bit smaller. Font's pretty tall for that. You know, a little bit more length. He's going to have a little bit more range. Um, you know, but Lineker, he's just he's just been so good at that weight class, um, and and so tough. And coming in last minute, you know, sometimes uh, that can be a bad thing, but sometimes it can be a good thing. I think if you're in shape and you're ready, if you take it on uh, two weeks notice, you haven't trained, it's a terrible thing. But if you're ready to go, the other guy have as much time to prepare for you. They set up one style. Um, I, I think that that could be a very interesting fight. I would actually give Lineker as a slight advantage, but. That, that could be a real good fight if, if he can solve that and not being able to um, the distancing thing, which he always has been able to do in the past. Right? Yeah. Be... Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Lineker, if he can touch you at that weight class, he can put you down. And uh, I, I like it. I'm a fan of Lineker's uh, style. I think I got Lineker in a tough fight there, though. But Rob Font, a very good, very, very good fighter. Uh, main event on this Saturday's card uh, that we were just referring to is going to be Hanato Moicano. Uh, versus the Korean zombie, Chan Sung Jung. Uh, that seems like a really, really good fight. How do you see that one going down? You know, I'm going to I'm gonna go, I think, probably against the odds here. I'm, I'm going to go with the Korean zombie. I think I, I would imagine he's probably an underdog, but I haven't really looked at the lines or anything. But, uh, man, I mean, you know, I, it's very impressive. The guy had to take off several years ago serve his time in the military. He came back and he put on some amazing fights. Um, man, the guy's just tough. And I just, and I know, um, you know, whatever happened last fight happened last fight, but I'm, I'm going with him. Uh, just, uh, he's just, I think it's his time right now. I think he's matured a little bit over being in the military and he's just, a, a just he, he's hard to deal with, man. Uh, and, and I look for him to pull off the upset. Yeah, I think you may be right. I think you may be right. Both are coming off a loss. Uh, Moicano coming off a loss. I think it was to Aldo, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jose Aldo. And then uh, uh, the zombie coming off probably one of the best fights I've ever seen in my life, at least from a striking standpoint in the world of MMA, when he fought against uh, El, Pantera, uh, El Pantera, uh, uh Yair Rodriguez. And Rodriguez caught him with an upward elbow. Uh, at the end, man, that was just absolutely insane, but an amazing performance by the zombie. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick the zombie there as well. All right, let's go to the, the following. One of the best finishes I've ever seen in a fight. Couldn't believe it happened. Yeah. I, I, I'm 
unbelievable. Yeah, that was amazing. That was just amazing. I'll have to go watch that fight again. That's something that deserves revisiting uh, for those of you who haven't watched it in, in a long time or never saw it for sure. Absolutely love that. Okay, uh, let's go a week away, and we're talking about 29th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's talk about Damian Maya versus uh, Rocco Martin, formerly known as Anthony Martin, now Rocco or Anthony Rocco Martin. What do you think there, Maya against Martin? You know, one thing uh, I will say, it just seems to me, um, you know, a lot of the guys who were fighting around my era, it just seems like, man, this sport's very unforgiving, and father time tends to be undefeated. Um, yeah, yeah. But that being said, uh, there is a threshold and a time when that happens. And when you get over that hump, then it's all down. And it seems very tough. I haven't seen enough for Anthony or Rocco, whatever you want to call him. I haven't seen enough for me to think that um, my, Maya still, he, he hasn't shown any signs of cracking yet. So I'm going to go with Maya in this one. I think his experience and he doesn't do everything well, but what he does well, you know what it is. I know what it is. Everybody knows what it yeah. is, but can you stop it? I yeah. just don't seem to be able to stop it the entire, for, for the entire fight. Yeah. Is there a chance? Absolutely. And then, you know, one of these fights, you're going to say, oh, yeah, he got old. But yeah. um, I don't yeah. see it happen this time. Yeah. It's, it's, it could happen, but I don't see it happen right yeah. now. Yeah. It seems, it seems like if you're not an elite level Division One uh, wrestler, are all American, then you're probably not going to beat Maya. That's why his loss is right. <laughs> yeah. Came against Tyron Woodley, Colby Covington, and Kamaru Usman. And so, yeah, yeah I, you know, it would be amazing. Rocco's on a hot streak, though, man. I don't know. I, I, I as a jujitsu guy, I, I'd hate to pick against Maya because he's such a nice guy. And it's possible had he gotten a title shot earlier against someone else, or who knows, that he may have been uh, may have been champion. And so I hate to pick against him, and, and I'll, I'll pick with him. But Rocco Martin's a tough guy. He, his, uh, his girlfriend is uh, Kayla Harrison, the judo Olympian. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she's lighting up over the PFL. And so uh, I'd love to, to chat with them and uh, hate to shout out a uh, pick against them. Well, you know, I, what can I say? I think I think Maya probably, but big respect, Rocco Martin, if you're watching. Lo love to have you on and uh, happy to talk to you and Kayla. Anyway, uh, next. Well, well, the point of that, like I said, is, is you know, I, I know he's a good fight. I just – Maya hasn't. I mean, in one of these times, we're gonna say, "Yep, Maya got old and yeah. you know, he's been out." But it's hard to say that until it happens. I've I've done that too many times with this guy's getting old. He's due to lose. He's due, and, and that's not the case, you know. So until I see a sign yeah. of that, a crack, a tink in the armor, there, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to go against him right now when you're at that level. It's hard yeah. to do it. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I would agree. I would agree. All right. How about uh, co-main event on that card? Uh, Joseph Benavides versus Juicier Formiga. And this is another one I've kind of went back and forth on. Um, first main thing, <laughs> this is going to sound like a broken record. I keep thinking Benavides has been around for so long, and, and he's he, and I, I'm a little surprised because he's he, I do they've been around a long time and i and i have seen them not at their at their peak level you know like i said i could with my because i haven't really seen him when he gets people to ground it's usually very very difficult for him he's so good that i haven't shown him time but you know i haven't really seen much of the I, I don't know i've not I went back and forth on this one i think if i had to pick a, a guy i'm gonna go with i'm gonna do it again just because like i said he's, he's been there for so long and I, I just haven't seen to me where I think he doesn't have it anymore. But um, yep. that's a, this is once again a case we have really good matchup and really good matchmaking to put this fight together. And it's just like I'm looking at it, I'm like, it's a tough one. You know, yep. I, I, you got like the top ranked guys there. It's just a coin toss in a way, but I'm going to go with experience. Yeah, absolutely. I'll agree with you 100%. Should be a super, super exciting, action-packed fight at that lower weight division. All right, how about the main event? Switch from the, the smaller guys to, to the biggest guys of all. Uh, Junior Dos Santos, a man who was fighting back when you were fighting against Francis, the Predator, and Ganu. Love to hear your breakdown on that. Uh, well, this is one where, you know, I am going to change it up a little bit. You know, you... Junior was, you know, phenomenal. The man, he, he was, you know, so good. That, but I mean, especially with these bigger guys, you know, you slow down just a little bit, and the guy who can hit so hard, he can hit a ton. I think we saw that in his last fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and Junior, he does. I mean, he has a full range of skills, but I, I'm going to be surprised if he's going to go out there trying to do nothing but takedowns. So 
if he's get stand up, he's going to get touched. And I, I see it not being a good night for him. I think, I think the guy who just wins by you know, pure devastation. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a highlight real knockout, but I think he's going to, he's going to put him down to her. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it would be sad to see him lose as quickly as Cain Velasquez did, although there is an asterisk with that, with Cain's knee possibly yeah. giving out, according to some people, and not according yeah. to others, right? But I don't know. I like Junior seems like such a nice guy. This would be such a huge victory for him as well. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick the dog in that fight. I know it's a hell of a long shot, and Ganu probably – finishes him off in a brutal fashion, like you said, but I'm going to go for the dog uh, just because I'm going with my heart on that, Junior DeSantis. There you go. Yeah. Okay, three fights left, and we got about five, five, six minutes left, so maybe about a minute on each. Uh, okay. All right. How about uh, from July 6th, the ladies, world title fight, Holly Holm going up against Amanda, Amanda Nunez for the UFC Women's Bantamweight Championship. You know, I think just, you know, everybody that I've really talked with, they say Nunez is, is the next coming of everything, one of the greatest fighters of all time, and that she's going to mop the floor with her. Um, I, 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 some of me has got a feeling about this one that, you know, with, with their styles, Holly Holmes was, you know, very good at, you know, coming up with a game plan, being strategic, and, you know, outboxing people. Um, I, I wouldn't be, I mean, I, I've never really seen her get rocked that bad too much. I mean, I I think this could be a tougher fight than people think for, for Amanda Nunes. I, I, I really think there's a decent chance that Holly Holmes is able to pull off an upset here. Um, I don't know. I mean, at, from if I'm betting on it financially, I'm probably picking Holly Holmes as a, if you think he would probably win, uh, Nunes still has a probably a fight advantage, but I think that that's a very tough fight to call. I think it's much tougher than most people think. And, I think Holly has a much better chance than people think. Yeah, I agree. Our staff here is universally picking Holly to win that fight. Although really? it's a okay. yeah, it's a scary fight. It's tough. She's gonna she's the underdog. Yeah. You know, Amanda Nunez is a, is is amazing champion, but I think Holly may just have her number. Interesting thing is, uh, okay. you know, Amanda is holding down both titles now. And our previous guest was uh, was uh, uh, before you here was Felicia Spencer, who's fight, fighting against Chris Cyborg. And, uh, you know, the interesting thing is to see what's going to go on with that fight, because that fight's three weeks after Holly versus Nunez. If Holly beats uh, Nunez, is Nunez going to say, okay, well, let me go and defend my other title? Because why wouldn't you want to do that? Or would she insist on a fight, a rematch with Nunez? It's really interesting. So so what Nunez does, what happens in her fight with Holly, is not only going to have ramifications for the bantamweight division but for the women's featherweight division as well and so we're really uh excited to see what happens there but yeah i think we're going uh, with holly in an exciting fight there and then the other two fights here uh give me maybe about a minute and a half on each uh from um from your former weight class and i know that uh you're very familiar with these guys jorge masvidal i think was there for a couple two three years when you were fighting i think he was starting out he's been fighting for about 10 years or more maybe even 11 12 yeah. years right against a uh, funky ben Askren. uh what i'd love to hear how, how how does that fight play out what do you think we're gonna see there and then and then what do you think the result's gonna be man this is another one of those that is I don't want to say, I want to say it's a very difficult one to pick. I mean, because to be honest with you, I, I'm still not 100% sold on, on, on Ben. I mean, to yeah. me, he hasn't been fighting the caliber. He fights one guy against Robbie Lawler and, you know, questionable. Um, you know, he gets he, – he got the victory, questionable in my opinion. You know, did he have a good choke? And absolutely. Was, could Robbie pick him up and slam him? Maybe. I don't know because – if you've ever been choked unconscious, you know you're not you're out of it for about 30 seconds. As soon as they let go, Robbie jumps up. I'm fine. So yeah. he didn't have that uh, question, and he was getting you know molly whopped before that. So yeah, how could it be? I don't know. Cause I tell you one thing, I would. What, my spot was one of the few guys I don't think I'd like to fight. Man, right. that guy seems like he's hitting on all cylinders right yeah. now. He's a yeah. uh, he's a beast right now. Um, that is an extremely tough fight to call. Uh, 
I, I don't know. I, I'd probably take Masvidal on that, to be honest with you. But, you know, Ben just has a way of winning these things somehow. He hasn't lost yet. That's hard to go against that. Yeah. Might this be it. Uh, I think it could be, but you know, I, that's one fight I really wouldn't like to pick at all. But that, that yeah. should be a, a great one. Without a doubt. Be very entertaining. Yeah, without a doubt. And definitely title ramifications, I think, for sure in uh, the winner of that fight. Uh, it'd be interesting if Ben Askren won that fight and again had his face and his head completely, like, smashed again. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be kind of bizarre if that became and, what and, That could does. happen, too. Yeah, it really could, you know, and I think if he does win, that's probably going to be the case because uh, uh, I, I, Masvidal is probably a little bit of a younger, fresher version than uh, of, of Robbie. And uh, so he barely got by Robbie with the skin of his teeth in somewhat of a controversial fashion. Uh, For sure. Yeah, so I think Masvidal is live in that fight, too. I haven't officially thrown out my pick there, but I may go Masvidal, but not maybe bet any money on it. But a live that, dog. That's yeah. how I feel. I mean, I, I think if I had to pick, I would, but it's hard to go against somebody who just finds a way to win. Masvidal, yeah. he's, he, he's a beast right now, man. Yeah. He, I would. It's a tough one. Yeah, really is going to be an exciting fight. Main event, John Jones going up against the Brazilian they call Maheta, Tiago Santos. Uh, before you give your thought on this, I like John Jones. We're, we're, we're friends with the, the team over at Jackson Wink, but I'm also yeah. always willing to speak my mind. And yeah. I, I, I really think Tiago Santos is a live dog. I'd love to hear how you feel this fight unfolds and what kind of fight we'll see and then the results. But my thoughts are John Jones better remember that he knows how to wrestle in that fight. Because if he conveniently forgets, this could be the guy that separates him from his senses. What do you think? Well, I mean, here's the thing is, is – you know, you, you know what's going to happen at some fight, I would think. I mean, I, I always feel like that when you get too compli uh, complacent, you're like, okay, this is another run of the mill fight. I'm a yeah. big over favorite. You know, somebody's going to sneak up and get you. Um, and might this be the fight? It, it, it could be. I, I don't think it will be. I think right now, I mean, this is just another in a long line of people who John Jones, it seems like they're just recycling everybody already and they're out of people for him to fight so they're just trying to throw new guys in at all time who not saying they're not great fighters but um i i, I just don't see them being enough good enough to beat him now i mean i i know fighting and i know that anybody can beat anybody on any given night if you're at that level and they're all at that level so could it happen absolutely but man john is just um he is unbelievably good at what he does and he makes difficult fights look easy he really does and yeah. Uh, I think it's going to take a certain like length and build. I mean, every you can get snuck up on. Everybody can get snuck up on, but um, I, I don't see it happening here. Could right. I, I, I'd love to be wrong, you know. I, I'd love some interesting, you know, matchups, and I want to see some. You know, it's no fun if you feel like you know who's going to win these fights. I don't yep. like that. No. I want to see some new blood and like, you know, something new happen. If it, if nothing else is for the rematch, you know, I'd like to see some some new things going on. Yeah, because uh, all things being said, I mean, there there's certain champions people you, you love and, and you want them to do well all the time. But you know, here's one I wouldn't mind seeing some controversy, some weird stuff happen. You know, I'm not saying he couldn't come back and win a, a, a rematch, but you know, I, I I think John wins this easily personally. Understandable. Then maybe Johnny Walker, the six foot uh, six inch Brazilian, may be the one left with that. And, and, and that's that's. I mean, I don't know if he's quite ready yet, but. I think it's going to take somebody like that to beat John. It's like we've seen, well, he doesn't do super well against really tall guys like himself. Right. Give him, give him the length and, and the reach advantage. He dominates people. It's not even fair. But, yeah. you know, when, when he struggled against guys, his own frame kind of, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. So that could be the guy. We'll have to see. You might be right. But I think that, uh, you know, I think uh, Santos I, is a good I, I'm chance. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I could be wrong, too. I could be very well wrong, too, on that, because John Jones seems to keep proving everyone wrong, man. But anyway, hey, I really want to thank you for your opinions on all that. Your breakdown is on point, as always, man. I want to make sure we can shout out what you're going to be doing. You will be on TV at the mic for Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship. This is, what, number five? Number six. Number six. Awesome. Let us know when, where, and how people can see it in person and how people can watch it on TV. Man, that'll be this Saturday night. Uh, we're in Tampa. Um, it's going to be an awesome fight. Uh, just uh, you can do it on pay-per-view. Anywhere you find, like UFC or wherever pay-per-views, you know, used to find those. You can get, get the pay-per-view on that. Bare Knuckle BKFC 6. Check it out. 
Pauli Malinaji against Artem Lobov. Huge yep. match with a lot of uh, unkind words between the two of them, as well as I think seven or eight other great fights. You can see great commentary from this man, Chris Lytle, so don't miss it. I know I won't. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to join us back here in the MMA Power Hour, my friend. Anytime, brother. Appreciate it. No problem. You take care. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. And that was Chris Lights Out Lytle. Great opinions. A man knows what he's talking about, having been in there. So many exciting fights. A few people don't know him. I think he fought from like 2002 to 2013 or 14. Uh, and uh, amazing fighter. Five or six fight of the night bonuses. And uh, really exciting guy. The guy knew boxing. The guy had his jits. Some slick leg locks. All kinds of submissions. Anyway, we are ready for Absolutely. our next guest. Absolutely. So here. that's going to be a moment here. And that will be a moment. No problem. Make a couple changes. But real quick, I want to go ahead yes. and say thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'm seeing some uh, amazing support from people tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, we always appreciate the likes, comments, and shares. And, and I'm thanking you in advance for, for that, as always. Uh, make sure you also go to digisouth.co. Give them a, a, a look if you're looking for social media marketing. Uh, some of the best guys uh, there. Uh, I mean, I'm one of them. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a little biased. But uh, the, my partner's over there are, are a bunch of great guys and we're able to help bring along a lot of authentic interactions for those of you looking to build up your social media profiles brands uh if you're an influencer as an individual or a, a corporation we can help you out now also uh you see the t-shirt i'm wearing here uh go to cross trained fighter or cross train MMA fighter.com. I always, I always, no problem. I we apologize. actually have both lines. We have cross train fighter and cross. -train yes. Yes. Fighter. Go to cross train MMA fighter.com. Pick up a t-shirt or you can hit up uh, Colin or me and we, we can help you out there. Uh, also, uh, you can get some awesome MMA power hour t-shirts from us. Just hit, hit us up. Uh, obviously there's going to be a little bit of a fee for that, but, uh, hit us up in a private message, uh, on our Facebook page, make sure to give our Facebook page a like, if you have not, for those of you on fight TV tonight, uh, for those of us, for those of you who are on Facebook watching and have not been over to the Fight TV page yet, make sure to get on over there. Give that a, a, a thumbs up or a, a positive rating. We can use your help there as well. Also, if you're a CBD user, make sure to go on over to warfighterhemp.com. You can get an awesome dis uh, discount. All you got to do is put in discount code that comes across the top of the screen here multiple times throughout the show. Uh, just keep an eye out for that, and it's, it's right there. And They will uh, indeed help you fight the war <laughs> of pain. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. You know what? Mm -hmm. Having Felicia, Felicia Spencer on earlier still kind of has me thrown for a loop. I mean, awesome. how many how many of the past, uh, I'd say, five opponents of Cyborgs have we had on the show? We've had a few. We've had Felicia, Tanya Evinger, Yana Kunitskaya, uh... Leslie Smith, you're right. We've had most of Cyborg's last uh, contenders. We haven't had Amanda on who beat her, but this is going to be the guest that we have on that beats her. Oh, but, yeah. But, I mean, we, but, but, yeah, we've had a lot of high-level women's uh, MMA fighters on, and Felicia Spencer is super cool. I've wanted to have her on for a while, and we connected, and we're able to connect and make schedules happen. Yeah, she's, she's, so, she's, she's so friendly, but, I mean, it's really throwing really me off because she's just, I mean, I did not humble. expect it to really happen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> look out, she's totally in demand. Everyone is wanting to talk to Felicia Spencer, you know, and she's a mom and she's a teacher and she's running around like crazy. She's teaching also her, her, her jujitsu and MMA as well as math, as well as training for a high level fight. And uh, it's super cool that she had the respect and belief in us enough to do a great interview with her. And uh, we really appreciate it. She is just an awesome person. Thank you so much, Felicia Spencer. Also, thank you so much, Chris Lytle. Let's get our next guest going on here. Let me get that Skype dance going. Or Skype I... dance. Here we go. Rock it. Hey, Devante, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. We got video. Fantastic. Let me give you a proper introduction here. This next guest I'm so excited to have on the show. He is a, a man with a 10-1 and record. He's 2-0 in the UFC. The man has nine stoppages out of his 10 victories. Uh, we are talking about uh, Devante Smith, and we're, we want to throw out the nickname King Cage, or is it Cage mm -hmm. King? King Cage, right? King Cage, King Cage. King Cage, Devontae Smith. So happy to have you. Welcome to the show, Devontae Smith. 
Thank you, thank you. My pleasure, man. I've heard so many great things about you, man. You came off the Dana White Contender Series, took care of business, stopped your guy there, came into your first UFC fight, stopped your guy there, came into the second UFC fight, stopped your man there. I, except for one fight that, that was a tough fight in a third round grueling matchup, other than that, everyone you fight, you stop. Is that something that you always set out to do? Did you always have it maybe like more in your mind than some other people don't leave it to the judges or has that just happened when you jump in there and take care of business? Uh, I just fight, you know, and uh, opportunities show themselves. I mean, uh, I had one fight where um, I know I won the fight, uh, but I didn't get the finish and uh, I believe I was fighting a hometown guy and that was my it was my amateur record but it was a draw right. and the pain i felt you know that i left it in the hands of the judges when yep. i could have been like you know a, ch a champion right you know that really did something to me so yeah i, I don't do those you know no. uh no. i don't leave it in the hands of the judges i don't like that no and you have nine tkos or ko's and one submission so what's up with that submission was that a fluke or do you know your jits a little bit <sighs> Okay, you got jokes. Uh, <laughs> that was, uh, Thank you. That was uh, truthfully that wasn't the goal to get the uh, submission because I really wanted to touch him just because yeah. that was like my first like MMA beat. But uh, I mean, I knew I needed to train my jujitsu so much that you know when when I got in a certain uh, position, it was just like second nature. Right. And uh, you know, he called me a one trick pony, so I, I thought it was funny. I love know, that. that I, I finished it that way. He you ended up he ended up having the trick played on him. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I love it. And then you got him with that arm triangle choke. And that, to me, spells that you have a little bit of a wrestling background. A lot of wrestlers love that submission. So you got your wrestling. So, man, with a guy with the striking that you have, you got your wrestling too, man. That definitely makes you dangerous because wherever someone goes with you is bad news. Tell us a little bit about your background, man. Take us back maybe. You're only 25 now. Take us back to maybe like high school. Were you competing in any in anything there? Did you wrestle? Did you do martial arts or anything at all? What, what What's your background? Give me some of the highlights of, uh, um, of what some of your training has I, been. Uh, I, 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 bought, I used to get in a lot of fights when I was little. Like, I think I, I think I was like four or five when I got my first fight. Oh, man. Uh, I know, right? But, uh, you know, as I got older, I, I didn't like blow up yet. And my mom, I used to get in like a lot of altercation with, with people a lot bigger than me. Yep. And my mom, she put me in boxing. Uh, I, ain't, I I did cool, but she I guess I wasn't so much into it. Uh, then I started wrestling in high school. It, kept, it actually kept me out of trouble in a lot of ways. I did uh, wrestling all four years. I went to I could have went to states, but I cracked under pressure and I used that as like a motivation to like you know, you know, to be able to still go with everything on me. Right, absolutely. And tell us where you're training online. It says Factory X. Is that it, or is that not correct? No, that's it. Uh, Factory X on uh, Inglewood, Colorado. Very cool. And so you've got some good people there. You want to throw out any names of any people that help you uh, train for these great fights? Okay, okay. Uh, we got we got Anthony Smith, uh, Court McGee, nice Yusuf Zulaw, my dude uh, Markel, uh, Chris. Uh, I can call him Critique S, but he, El Guapo here in the UFC as well. Yeah. Uh, Professor Busy, uh, my coach Mark Montoya. Uh, the Kabozis, uh brothers. Uh, shoot, because I know people are going to be like, oh, what about me? Right. But the whole Factory X team nice. uh, helped me out in Jordan, helped me out in, the, in a major, major way. And I left, if I left your name out, I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of things is racing. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's a bunch of killers over there, man. And right. uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Mark Montoya. He gets some respect, and it looks like he deserves it. And uh, he's got a, he's got a great team there, man. Lionheart Smith, that's your, your boy there. That must have been a sweet victory watching him go over to Sweden and beat Alex Gustafson. Mm -hmm. But you, you probably had a feeling it would go down like that, huh? Um, yeah, of course. You know, got to believe in your teammates and, uh, you know, see how hard he works in the gym, you know. Of course. Absolutely, man. So you have a fight coming up. Let us know where that's going to be and when and who your opponent is. I'm um, fighting August 17th in Anaheim, California against John McDessey. Yep. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Yep. Uh, but I don't know. He's, to me, he, he's just another body for real. Yeah. You know, another obstacle. 
Uh, I respect him in, in in every way, but you know, eh, I got I got things I need to do. Yeah, I mean? absolutely, man. No, I think that uh, that's a that's a good fight for you. That's a fight that uh, that is going to be exciting because he likes to mix mix it up and strike. That's mm -hmm. pretty much his game primarily. I think you're a little bit longer than him, but but not you know by much. But you're definitely like nine or ten years younger than him. And mm -hmm. do you, are you a guy that tends to want to look? add a lot of film on your opponent because you just mentioned that you just kind of you know he's just another body and i understand that so maybe that's already kind of making clear what your thought is but do you do you kind of not try to look at too much at what your opponent does or do you study film a lot or a little bit or how do you how do you handle that oh uh, of course i study film i mean you got to but other than that you know i i just believe in myself so much because i know uh, the the work i put into it so uh, I know I'm going to win. I know I will win. And, you know, I'm ready to become 11 and 1 and move on to the next stage. Yeah, absolutely. So, and this is what, August 17th? Yes. And where's that going to be again? Uh, Anaheim, California. Fantastic. I'm going to tell you what, man, I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can to be there because I live only one hour from there. Oh, then you got to be there. Yeah, I'm going to make sure to be there. But if I, you know, I'm going to see too because we, we, we are a UFC media accredited show. And okay. so I'm going to I'm going to reach out to them. They have said that that some of the big shows in California, they have a few people that are in line first. So either way, though, I'm going to end up there. But now. Oh, yeah, here we go. We got one of my one of my uh, staff members is holding up a Denver Broncos blanket here. So he wants to show support for the Colorado guest. We have on show. So he's got, he's just, you know, so we just shot that out. But anyway, I'm going to be there either way, man. But definitely, man, I uh, love to, love to do an interview with you sometime. I think after or whenever you can uh, on that date in person. Yeah, uh, most definitely. Cool. I appreciate it. So John McDessie, you're not worried about him. You're looking for footage. The great footage was when he got knocked out by that spinning heel kick, you know, which is awesome. But, uh, you know, I know that you're going to do your own thing there. Do you, yeah. do, do you, do you go out there now with this streak of stoppages really trying to make that happen? You have a lot of first round stoppages as well. Do you, do you ever try to pick the round in your head or do you ever play like, you know, that and say, I think I'm going to get this guy in the second round or third. I don't want to give away too many secrets. If you don't want to give it away, but do you ever do you ever have a thought about what round like do a little Muhammad Ali uh, uh, picking? Nah, I um, I just fight. Yeah, <laughs> to the truth, I just I just fight. You know, makes sense. Uh, makes sense. I, I, like I said, I know I'm gonna win, so I just gotta be patient. You know, whether it's first round, second round, third, I know I will win, but yep. I like getting in and getting out. You makes know? sense. Makes sense. By my day. Absolutely, you don't get paid by the minute in there. You know, you get paid for winning it. Do you do you have any preparation for the next time, if there is a next time, that the fight goes a distance? I always like to throw this out to younger fighters, not that you need me to be your coach with a team like you have, but as a, as a lifelong martial artist myself, I always say, always good to have a plan that's that makes sure that you don't end up getting frustrated. So I, right. I hope to hear that if somehow it's in the middle of the third round, and, and as long as you're winning, you're not going to start getting frustrated or do anything crazy to try to get someone out of there. You're prepared to go the distance if you need to, I'm sure. I'm, I'm always. Okay. You know, even when I wasn't uh, in the UFC, I knew that, you know, since that Gunther fight, some people could just take a beat. Yep, absolutely. You know? Absolutely so, <laughs> man. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you after, said that. So after that lesson, you know, after that loss, you know, I, I grew from that, so... I'm I'm ready, cool. you know. Uh, and like you said, the team that I got, I make all the mistakes. I get uh, I'm frustrated at practice. I, I put the work in all that practice. So Absolutely. when it's time for me to shine, I shine bright. Absolutely. And, and so you know, I, it's already it's already uh, in the uh, we'll say the, the equation. I like that. So I'm I like that. Worried about it. That's cool. Now you're training up there in altitude, so when you come down here to sea level, it's got to be real easy to breathe, huh? easy work i love it i love it well let me ask you you were kind enough Devonte was kind enough to agree to jump into our pros pick segment and we're going to come back and talk more about his fight in a few minutes but i will ask his opinion on some upcoming fights over here and the pros pick segment is brought to you by digi south and we have what i think we have three uh big fights here love to get your opinion on let me go ladies first and see how do you feel Holly Holm against Amanda Nunez for Amanda Nunez Women's UFC Bantamweight Championship. Can you give me some insight on how that fight will unfold? What do you think maybe some of the keys to look out for will be? And then a prediction if you have one. 
Uh, I feel like he can go either way. Um, obviously, with uh, Amanda Nunez, uh, her power and uh, how, like, you know, vicious she is when she comes in with her striking. But I feel like he can go Holly Holm way as well if she goes uh, goes about it in a more of a technical, you know, uh, way. You right. know, uh, picking her shots and really uh, doing things that make sense. Right. You feel it should be competitive or it could end up being really one-sided? Uh, it, it, it truly can go either way. Yeah. You know, if yeah. Amanda Nunez is like being the aggressor and catching her, it can, you know, it can be really one-sided. But if uh, Holly Holm keeps it at a, you know, a technical uh, style, it can be real competitive, you yeah. know, because, yeah. you know, Nunez might be behind in the cards. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that will have ramifications on the featherweight title. We had Felicia Spencer on earlier going against Cyborg. So depending on what Amanda does and what happens with Holly, that could dictate what she does with her other title, the featherweight title. So that's going to be interesting. All right. How about uh, one weight division up from you? Funky Ben Askren against game bred Jorge Masvidal. Uh, yeah, that's another one that can go either way. Because uh, I feel like since that, since Ben Askren got like slammed on his head yeah. and was still fighting, yeah. he, he could take a beat. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, but he only human. So how much of a beating can he really take? Yeah. So if he going in about how he went and get about it uh, with Darren Till and in the aftermath, like that that type of like aggression and like confidence, he could come out with the win. Yeah, he could. It's going to be interesting because uh, what do you call him? Ben Askren. I said, what do you call him? Ben Askren had been really killing people in other organizations, but his very first fight in the UFC he did get he did get smashed pretty badly before he yeah. ended up getting that bulldog choke which was somewhat controversial as far as yeah. the stoppage but it's going to be interesting but uh but you know the winner of that i think should be in consideration for uh, a shot against uh, kamaru usman i guess maybe after colby covington uh yeah. gets him so that should be interesting how about uh, the last one i think is going to be uh the big men john bones jones a man that hopefully we see you on that same level with somewhere down the line and I, I believe you can make that happen but for right now we got bones jones against uh, tiago santos what do you think uh what do you think we're looking at in that fight as far as how it, that will unfold it's it's really hard to bet against uh john jones you know yeah. um uh, uh not, not not take anything from uh um, santos Tiago santos Santos, thank you yeah. not take anything from him because he got the power and you know he has the aggression to win because you know john jones is touchable yeah but you know he i feel like he had that 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 mayweather level where like that pressure of like oh it's john jones yeah. you know yeah so if he goes with in there with the with the mentality of like I don't care who you are, and like I have no respect for you, like in the fighting realm, yeah. you know. But yeah. Yeah. you know, this is this is purely business, and you know, I will win type of uh, attitude, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know. Do you think? Do you think that Jones is going to to create a strategy for this particular opponent? I, and correct me if if you think I'm wrong. I think this is one of the more dangerous strikers that Jones has fought. Right. And and so my thought is Jones is two inches taller than him. Yeah. Got some reach on him, but nowhere near the, the reach and the length he has on a lot of his other opponents. Right. Um, my thought is that is that he, he needs to remember his wrestling, I feel in mm. this fight mm. and, but do you mm. think because lately he hasn't been doing that too much even though when he shot in and finished the fight against uh alexander gustafson but do you think we're going to see some wrestling out of john jones in this fight and and or do you think that he may just try to fight a lot of the striking style as he that, that he normally uses i feel like he's going to like Take, it, uh, take what Santos gives him, you know. Right. Uh, if, if, I feel like if Santos like um, overwhelms him, then he may go to wrestling. But if if Jones feels confident in his striking and he's picking him apart, then it'd be like, what, what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, just getting over. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little bit of a cold. Sorry, everybody. Um, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be interesting. You know what's interesting is that Santos not only has really good hands and is a good boxer, but he has that capoeira style, you know, which is very interesting. And uh, you know, I think that he's going to throw some interesting stuff at Jones. I think mm -hmm. that you know, you know what's interesting. I mean, 
when you're so good like Jones, you almost wonder if Jones's mindset might be, I'm going to beat this guy at whatever this guy's good at, or or I feel like standing with with my opponent and I'll stand with him. Do you advocate something like that if you're that good, or or do you think that you need to look at what your opponent is, not what you're better at him then, and go and employ that? Me personally, yeah. My my thought process is the win. I yeah. I, I really it is the win. That, that's all I care about. I yeah. care about winning because yeah. at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Right. It's like I won. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, and I feel like John Jones puts that same mentality because we we seen him beat people uh, close with a Glover Texera. I suck with names, so don't no don't problem. Te- disrespect Glover, Texera. anybody. Yeah, yeah. No but yeah. he was like just close clinching, just elbows, and everybody thought that was you know going to be the Texera Texera. Uh, yeah, you know, yep. yeah, strong point. You know, uh, I feel like he just likes to win. That's all he cares about. Yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be exciting, man, because he's pretty much cleaned out that division. And, and, you know, other than that, you got that crazy six foot six Brazilian Johnny Walker. But I think that, you know, Tiago Santos is a dangerous guy. And I know your guy Lionheart gave John uh, a tough yep. fight and he ended up getting fouled with that knee and continued yeah. on, right? So he, he may be back. Uh, it's too bad that we. Do you think we'll ever get to see John Jones against a DC at heavyweight? Doesn't look like it, does it? I, I don't know. Uh, only time will tell. Yeah, that would be interesting. Well, what do you have a timeline to get up there at the high level? At 25, you're still very young in the game. But do you does you uh, does your team and do you look at things like 2020? You want to start seeing some some ranks, some numbers behind you, or 2021? Or are you not even going to worry about that? Um, I don't worry about that. Not you yet. know, uh, I am not in a rush, right. but I'm also not going to be too patient right um give me like five seconds until sure. i don't yeah for sure <laughs> uh oh got dark quick no problem but um hey awesome but um yeah i'm yeah i'm not i'm not, I'm not in a rush but i'm not gonna be too patient and what i mean by that is like you know, I'm not gonna put that pressure on me. Yeah. Because I know I will be champion. Yeah. I know it's good, but I I just I know it. I know. Absolutely. Like you know, like I said, I was I was, I, was, I wanted to do this since I was 14, and I'm here. I like it. And, and I'm I'm with a, I'm with a good team, and I'm putting in the work. I know I will be champion. You know, because I am champion. You Absolutely. know, I just gotta beat everybody. I gotta beat to get the title from you know, from everybody else. But. Um, Absolutely. No, yeah. I don't. I don't put that pressure on me. Good. I like that, man. Every every question I have, you're answering correctly. So I got to give you credit, man. Yeah. No, you you have a good head on your shoulders, and I'm happy to hear that, and I'm impressed. Give us some facts about uh, Devonte Smith that people don't know. What do you do in your spare time? Are you a big gamer? Do you go out and play hoops? Do you go out and play golf or bowling or or what kind of fun stuff that, that you know can people find you doing? Uh, when you're not training and working out for your MMA career, I uh, like it. I watch uh, I watch anime All right. a lot. Cool. Uh, shoot, what else do I do? Shoot, I, I I ain't like hiking until I came out here, so I be hiking every now and then. Right. What else I be doing? You big? I like cooking. Cooking? Okay. What kind of stuff do you cook? I don't know. I just look in the refrigerator and I just put Whatever's stuff together. There, that's cool. What yeah. uh, are you big into music? You have any favorite bands or favorite artists? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, got a lot of fit. Do I? I will have to like look into my uh, phone real quick. That uh, what do I listen to? No problem. I don't know. There's a lot of random stuff. All right. A lot of a lot of like stuff that inspired me. I right. guess. Uh, any certain any certain style of music or anything? Uh uh chill jazz, like hip hop, okay. Drake, Future, okay. Gucci May, uh shoot, T Grizzly, Big Crit, nice. uh Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, like all, all that stuff. Like cool. stuff that have like meaning and other things that just, you know, I like for the beat. Very cool. Very cool. What kind of support do you get from your family? Do you have brothers and sisters that are cheering for you and both of your parents? Or do you actually have some relatives that are saying, man, this is too dangerous. This is too crazy. What kind of feedback do you have with, with people around you like that? Uh, it was more of like the, uh, the time. Like, 
in the beginning, I think I feel like people thought I was playing when I said I was gonna do this. And then when I started doing it, they was like, ah, I don't think this is like the right thing for you to be doing. But as I kept winning and showing that, you know, I'm a hard worker, you know, it's, it's nothing but support. Nice. You know, because nice. they know I prepare myself for war and I'm good at it. Very cool. And you're over there in Colorado, but you're not from there, are you? No, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Nice. 216. Nice, two one six Midwest man. Yeah, I grew up in Michigan. I know our sports teams were kind of rivals on the college level, but always respected my friends from Ohio. Midwest is a lot of good pet, good people, tough people, hard training. Did you have anyone in your family or anyone that motivated you to get into combat sports that you looked up to? Uh, my older brother. Uh, we were uh, we used to be over my dad's house um, in the sunroom watching Pride. Uh, yeah. and we used to be in the basement sparring. I would lose a lot, but it, like I would start them though. So nice. cause I just, it was fun for me. We were actually like being in the uh, basement sparring. Nice. Uh, he wrestled for Euclid. I wrestled for Bedford. You know, we competed against each other. So that was uh, he was my biggest inspiration in, in becoming a fighter. That's cool. I bet he's got to be cheering hard for you all the time, huh? Yeah. Now, does he ever? He's your older brother, you said, right? Yeah. Will he ever call you up and give you advice on stuff? And if he does, do you say, come on, man, I, I don't need you to tell me? Or or do you like to hear what he might have to say, or does he never even do that? Uh, No, he don't really do that. You know, because, you know, again, I feel like he fought more than me. Right. And, you know, I've been fighting since I was younger. So we, he know I got it. That's cool. So That's cool. Well, I'm excited about this, man. This is going to be August 17th. Uh, here in Anaheim, the big card that has Daniel Cormier against Stipe Miocic. It has Nate Diaz against An Antony, uh, Anthony Pettis. Uh, it has you against John McDessie. Am I forgetting another big fight on that card? Anyone else you can think of? Uh, my, 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 my teammate, uh, Ian Heinich. Nice. Heinish is tough, man. And, and and you know what? I talked to him. I got to talk to him again. But if you wouldn't mind, let him know if you had a good time on my show, man, because I'm talking to him about getting okay. him on in the next couple of weeks, man. But hey, Devante, I want to thank you for coming on, man. You're an honest guy. You have a great head on your shoulders. I like your attitude at 25 years old. You're not in a rush, but you're not going to just sit around and let things go by. You're not stressed out about finishing a fight if it doesn't go that way, but you do it almost all the time. Everything you say is on point, man. I'm going to be cheering for you a lot. And how can people get on uh, social media and hit you up to support you? What are some of your addresses there where you might respond when you have time? So my Instagram is K-O-E underscore K-I-N-G K-A-G-E UFC. Also, go to my um, my clothing line um, page. You know, get your say no more. Uh, Key K shirt, 10 toes. Cool. Uh, at uh, 10 toes. T E N T O E S underscore two one six. And I believe my uh Twitter is my first Instagram, K O E underscore King sounds, Cage UFC. Sounds great. And this is the man known as King Cage, and he is becoming king of the cage, and even to a greater extent as time goes by, I'm sure. Devante Smith, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on the MMA Power Hour. Thanks for having me on, bro. You're very welcome, bro. Take care, be well. We'll stay in touch. Yeah, yeah. All right, later. And that was Devontae Smith, very cool guy, 25 years old, and he's already got a record of 10 and 1, 2 and 0 in the UFC, 1 and 0 in Dana White's Contender Series, all by stoppage. Really good head on his shoulder, it's easy going. Training with a bunch of killers. I know you're familiar with maybe a couple of the guys he mentioned. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with pretty much everyone he mentioned training over there with Mark Montoya and all those uh, killers. Man, gotta believe in him, Devontae Smith, King Cage. So check him out. Yeah, I'm stoked to see a lot more coming from him. Yeah, absolutely. 25 years old, man. He's in a really good position with a great team training up there at altitude. So when he comes away from altitude, it's even easier on his lungs. So that's a good situation. A lot of people have had a lot of success. <coughs> where, man, you're sick. Yeah, whereas for me, <laughs> if I was at altitude, I'd probably be on the ground right now. Yeah, just, you know, the cough is the last thing to go, I think. Anyway, <laughs> excuse me for the cough, ladies and gentlemen, but... Okay, I, I want to thank you all so much uh, for joining us. We have a few minutes left, I hear, Dr. Adam Rorta. We're yeah, definitely. I, uh, real quick before we head on, Adam, I want to go ahead and say thank you to Combat Press. Uh, they are actually my go-to source for all things combat sports related. Uh, when, when it comes to the news, 
I have to go to them just because I, I need no fluff news. I need to know the inside scoop with all the fighters. Uh, I used to, I'd say three years ago, not really know the, the fight scene all that well. I stepped out for quite a while, so I, I had to catch back up. It literally took me about three weeks of just reading through stuff there over at combatpress.com where every fight has a story. Uh, and I, I caught up super fast. I, I mean, I feel like I, I'm up there with all the other experts. Absolutely. Sometimes I'm, I, I say some stupid stuff, but uh, you know, that's just me. And even if I follow it religiously right. and, and everything religiously and watch every single fight, uh, I'm going to say the dumbest Once shit. Once in a blue moon, but you're pretty much on it. You're knowing your stuff. You've caught back up from your time off and uh, really have thrown yourself into uh, our great sport of mixed martial arts. Definitely, but everybody, make sure to go on over to combatpress.com. Also, follow us on Twitter. We aren't super active there. However, we do have news that gets pushed through there. It is Combat Press's uh, news that they feed us. Uh, also, if you have not added us on Facebook yet, make sure to give us a like. Our, our actual page, MMA, or facebook.com backslash MMA Power Hour. We're the only ones, if you search MMA Power Hour, we're the only ones that are going to pop up, I think. There might be one or two other people, yeah. but we're the, we're the only real deal. You'll see it logo right at the bottom of the screen. Uh, point the right direction yep, at yep. the bottom of the screen right here. Uh, you can... Just add us. Yep. I mean, really, just do it. We can, Please, we can use it. the support. Also, we you Facebook users, it. a big thing that could help us out that would be so simple is just getting on over to Fight TV. F-I-T-E TV. F-I-T-E dot TV. Yes, watch Go on over, give us a search in the search bar, and make sure to bookmark and like uh, and, and rate us up on fight tv that will help us out tremendously as well and, and man uh, talking about the bare knuckle fights and and uh chris yep. brought it up with uh uh pay-per-views i know a lot of the times fight tv actually is one of the providers for yes. the pay-per-view for, yes. for the bare knuckle bare fights knuckle fight and I, I believe they are for this one coming up Absolutely. Uh, I, i'm not sure but definitely check them out because they have uh, amazing uh pay-per-view scheduling with all the different fights wrestling combat sports just a go-to spot man and, and we'd Absolutely. love to have you following us there as well as on facebook yes. thank you guys so much thank you so much for another amazing show colin uh it, it really means the world to not just me but everybody else that's being able to tune in you you really know your stuff you're probably the most knowledgeable person in uh analysis of of mixed martial arts as well as um not just analysis but i'd say uh post fight uh commentating <laughs> thank you i appreciate commentary i'll pray i'll take it i appreciate it nah, hey, no, this is, sometimes you i mean listen your interviews you commentate the interviews and it's really interesting i think you would make an excellent uh, color commentator and eventually we'll we'll make sure that you are at least a guest color commentator for one of these organizations that Thank needs you. to happen dana if you're tuning in this week which i know you do sometimes uh make sure to uh get him at least a, a guest spot for one night i do it good <laughs> make sure everyone's proud and has a great time and uh uh, provide on point uh, editorial commentary whether it's color or play by play absolutely and everybody if you get a chance go on over to GQ uh, submit uh, information for both Colin and I for sexiest man alive you can, there you go whatever I think uh, him I think I might be <laughs> too old for that now but uh, Dr. Adam Rorta leading in the roles uh, in the race against Adam Levine and a uh, and an old uh, older Brad Pitt and Channing Tatum I think Dr. Adam Rorta is still in first so put in your vote oh, wow. for Dr. Adam Rorta. Wow, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll take it. You got to do it. You know, uh, I'll, I'll, who will I compete? I'll compete against uh, uh, John Malkovich and uh, someone who's 65 years old. Though. I think he's not, my favorite actor. Yeah, Danny DeVito. I think I might be the better looking uh, uh, guy than Danny DeVito. Anyway, listen, uh, great star, though. Big talent, big talent. A lot more money than I have. Uh, I'm a lot taller, but then who isn't a lot taller? Than that? Anyway, uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Edward, thank you for the great, kind words. Um, I think. Uh, uh, if you that is all uh, for you, then uh, I can take it from here. Or was there any last thing? Oh yeah, no, that's it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> absolutely, thank you, Dr. Adamorta. Your contribution is valued tremendously and always absolutely uh, on point and uh, and uh, appreciated. So, ladies and gentlemen, the last couple of minutes we have here, I want to thank you so much. Uh, next week we're putting together a show. We will have Jillian Robertson from the American Top Team, that awesome redhead. She has got a big fight coming up uh, in. About a month, she will be on the same card as Felicia Spencer. 
and as a very tough Brazilian, she'll be fighting again against. And we've got a couple other great guests we're working on putting together, so we'll let you know. Want to let you know, though, look out for yourself. Be kind to yourself. Uh, it's no longer a cold winter, but it's still kind of a lonely world out there. So cut yourself some slack. More people love you than you think, and you deserve to you know, love yourself. That's what they would want for you. Take good care of your animals. Make sure that they have fresh air and cold water. It's really, really important. Uh, <coughs> Look out for your friends, your coworkers, your family. Give someone a call. Just give them a kind word, even if you have a minute. Uh, it, it, difference may be uh, life or death, you know. So let people know you love them, and uh, we uh, appreciate you and uh, want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, be that guy, be that girl. Spread the love in a positive way. It'll come back to you tenfold. For our entire staff, Dr. Adam Rorta and uh, everyone else. This is Colin Crandall for the MMA Power Hour, and I'm tapping out. sport that bridges generations live everywhere fight gives you instant access to live pay-per-view and free combat sports programs check out our combat sports schedule at fight.tv fight start watching well, welcome one, and welcome all to V3 Fight. This is exciting. The house is packed. Well, here we go. Knockout. Oh. Oh, oh. Pretty electric, man. People are on their feet. This is your main event. Wow. Let me hear you make oh, some oh, noise. Fight. Here we go. Nice takedown. Oh, wow. Now he's going to fall down. He's raining down. Elbows. Let's see if they touch gloves. Look wow. at that. That's a nice takedown. Trying to finish here. Right over. Ladies and gentlemen, declaring your winner. It's staying undefeated. Everyone here just got to witness V3 history. Are you looking for a good fight? Check out the fight pay-per-view schedule. Watch on the biggest screen in the house. What's the fight tonight? MMA, boxing, pro wrestling, live on pay-per-view. Just tap play and pick a screen to watch on. Playback shifts instantly to the screen of your choice. No hardware, no hassle. Download the Fight app and start watching today. private jet to Tuscany. You tired of me? Huh? I really need to get there fast. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Shut up, little boy. I'm talking to Fredo. Un poco di respect. Fredo. <laughs> Sorry, Al. There was someone disturbing me.
So I was telling you about Airwolf Jet Services. They're friends of ours. The best, amazing service. You should check them out now. www.airwolfjetservices.com